Oh, yes. <laughs>
<laughs> this is our last show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, the last show with me anyway, because I'm probably going to be dead. Mm-hmm. Um, no, the shield came away, and I just went to like press Put it, back on. press yeah. it back, and as, when I like, because I was just doing the shoulders, <laughs> just, just doing a little squeeze of the shoulders, and then the bottom of the shield just kind of went. I mean, it is old. It's already broken the other side because I broke it when I was younger. And this is why we're saying about you saying that the toys were a better quality back then. <laughs> if it was a modern day toy, it would probably be like a rubber shield. Yeah, which is what it needs. Because that's plastic. Yeah. So if you're actually trying to use them as a figure, they fall off all the time. I don't know. It's like, what's your opinion on toys these days? Like, I'm going to use Star Wars toys, for example. Okay. A lot of Star Wars toys back in the day, like if it was a Jedi character, all the robes would just be like solid molded plastic. And now it's fabric. And to me, the fabric just looks naff. And I agree. I hate fabric toys. It's a bit of both, I think. I think fabric, if it's done properly, looks mm. good. Like, like, yeah. Yeah. Well, like action, I suppose, are always fabric. Yeah. Um, some figures you get, wrestling figures is a good example. If you get, like, the Undertaker, he comes with a plastic coat. As someone that used to play with the wrestling figures, that annoyed the hell out of me because it's mm. an entrance attire and I cannot take that off. Yeah. And if you do take it off, it's just got plastic sleeves stuck on his mold. <laughs> so what's the point of that? Oh, no. just provide a, uh, and they've started doing fabric robes and things, and that's a good idea for someone who wants to have like a, an, an action figure that's a wrestling figure. But mm-hmm. what, I was, what I meant by I feel like toys back in the day had better quality, mm. what I meant was the, the detail in the paint work. Yes. Just like a lot, of, again, back to Star Wars. I was want I was given a um, clone trooper from the Black Series um, figurine, which is sat on my desk at the moment, called Colin. Okay. Um, and I, I like it, and I wanted <laughs> and I wanted another Black Series figurine to go with it. And I was looking at Luke Skywalker because kind of like Luke in Return of the Jedi. But every figurine I've seen of him, one eye is looking this way, and the other eye is looking that way. And it's like Luke is boss eyed in a lot of these figures. And it's just, it's like some of them just like really derpy. Like they've got derp face. One day you look at Mark Hamill and go, Oh my god, it's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a bit like it's a bit like the Indian chief and Chief Tess? Chief Female one. Poker Hunters. What do you call it? Poker Boo Boo. Poker Baba. Poker Baba. Almost there. Poker Boo Boo, Poker Baba. Poker BB. Poker. Dot. Bikini. Pokemon. Eeny weeny teeny weeny yellow poker dot bikini. <laughs> That's what I want to see you in, Rod. Anyway, the uh, <laughs> <laughs> the main issue, I think, is that they get like Chinese kids to make them and produce them as cheaply yeah, as possible. Yeah, but that's always that's always been the same. You look at any old toy and it says made in Taiwan or made in China and stuff, but I don't know, I just feel like the... I, Paint work is something that is particularly off in a lot of yeah. toys. Yeah, I look at them. I just think I am not because the the thing is as well. It's like the toys now, like the Black Series ones that I wanted to buy, twenty one pounds, not cheap. No. And for twenty one pounds, I am not going to get like a, a figure of Luke Skywalker whose face looks like it's been shotgunned on. Yeah. No, no way. If it was like a fiver, maybe. Or if it was like made at home. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like carved out of a wooden stump, like yeah. really roughly hewn, and like painted on by somebody with like crab claws for hands. <laughs> <laughs> then, yeah, and I was given it for free. <laughs> <laughs> I'd still probably throw it away. <laughs> no, I, I do agree. I suppose if I look back on the figures that I had when I was younger, mm. and I I would have some of the Star Wars ones. They were right. Yeah, uh, I had the bike mice. From our series, oh, I love they were right. Yeah, they, they were, were, they were ace. and I had all the Bucky O'Hare ones. Yeah, and they were also very good. They quality. were. So, yeah. Do you have uh, the Iron Man that you've got in there a new one or an old one? Is uh, from the Marvel Mashes series, which is a newer series, but is the oldest series one. Do you know they do Star Wars Mashes as well? I have noticed, and this is what I was going to guess at because I'd actually quite like to get a Jar Jar Binks one to put on the front of the table because realistically, <laughs> Jar Jar Binks is the most pivotal character in the first three Star Wars films and almost one of the best characters in Star Wars in general. Why? Because he brings about the rise of the Empire. He is just, he's got the best <laughs> character arc. Because he's, he brings about the rise of the Empire. He's the best well defined character and is the most influential, and I feel like personally, he touched me on a level that. No one else in Star Wars has. He touched you. He did. <laughs> it's the fact that he's like super hated by a lot of nerds. Like one of the main reasons why I like him as well. It's just that if you put Jar Jar Binks next to Darth Vader, let's be honest, mm-hmm. 
What's the comparison? Well, yeah. if it wasn't, <laughs> if it wasn't for Jar Jar, Darth Vader wouldn't have been quite as powerful as he was because Jar Jar again brought about the rise of the Empire. So basically, what you're saying is my point that Jar Jar Binks is the most pivotal character in the entire Star Wars. I think universe. I actually genuinely think I know you guys are being are being like sarcastic and joking, but I honestly do think that without Jar Jar Binks. I mean, obviously, I know the original trilogy was made first, and then the prequel, obviously, is a prequel trilogy. But if you think of it in the canonic, canonical like storyline, you know, where one comes first and then six is last, Jar Jar, when he votes to give... Well, when he moves, passes the... Well, introduces the motion to give Palpatine um, the authority to um, amass an army, that is pretty much him basically give, you know, giving him the go-ahead to start the foundations for the Empire. So yeah, Jar Jar kind of is responsible. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> See, most people go, oh god, Jar Jar, he's such a dick. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he is. But he kind of, yeah, he, he, he screwed over the Republic. <clears throat> One of my other points was, I was thinking about this because we were joking about it the other day, but if you get an average Star Wars... An average person, everyone knows what Star Wars is, right? That very few people yeah. don't know what it is, even if they've never watched the movies. I'd agree can, with that, yeah. You can find people that have never watched the films, but they know Star Wars. Well, they know Star Wars. It's, it's kind of a cultural phenomenon, really, exactly. isn't it? Yeah. So if you take a character that's much loved like Boba Fett and a character that's much loved like Jar Jar Binks, 99% of the time, people have no idea who the heck Boba Fett, Boba yeah. Fett is. And everyone will know who Jar Jar Binks is. But this is the thing. Why is Boba Fett <laughs> such a loved character when he's barely in the movies? He barely has any lines to say. Granted, the lines he does say, quite badass. But he, he has maybe like 10 lines in the entire film. And he gets taken out like a scrub by Han, by blind Han Solo. I'm not entirely sure on the Boba Fett look. And he dies in a giant sand vagina. I need to rewatch Star Wars sand like in all of this. Yeah, it's been a long time since I watched it. I've watched them <laughs> far too many times. Like, I probably talk about this. Is the, this is my problem? Any other knowledge that I have or had gets pushed aside for Star Wars trivia. I'm not saying I know everything about Star Wars, but I know a significant amount. And unfortunately, it won't leave my head. I've got a really, really important question for you both. Go I have on. a really, really, really important question for you regarding Star Wars. Maybe do that one first. Yeah, go on. Okay, is ET a Jedi? Well, he does kind of make Elliot's Cur- the reason I ask, bike levitate, doesn't he? The reason I ask is because he's in Star Wars. He is in Star Wars. His race yeah. is in the Galactic Senate. And he has like the Jedi sort of powers, yeah. I don't know if E.T. specifically, he could have Force powers. That's quite interesting. And his race is in the Galactic Senate. I think it's in Episode 2 where they mm. show up. So E.T., and Star Wars has that link to it, which is quite interesting. You know, the one thing that's... I'm not a massive Star Wars fan. I know a lot of people on the internet were pissed off when they pulled the Expanded Universe out of the... Uh, oh, yeah. And labelled it the Legacy mm-hmm. series. Yeah, but it's no longer canon, Legends. is it? It's, no, it's longer. no longer canon, no. So what I was always wanted to know, because like, I don't know much about the Expanded Universe, but mm-hmm. I always think the most important question about what is canon... Is is the uh, Star Wars Christmas special still canon to the overall series? I don't even know what that is. You need to watch that. It is a very, very... When they say Christmas special, oh, it's special. <laughs> there's, there's a scene... Ba- the basic premise of it is Chewie is going back to his home planet, Kashyyyk, mm-hmm. to celebrate Life Day. Which is Christmas. S- somewhat. And he's going with Han, and you're introduced to Chewie's family. Is this like animated or? Is no, no, no. This no, is this is full live action yeah. with full cast of Star Wars. With well, Harrison Ford. Yeah, and Mark Hamill as Luke, and Carrie Fisher as Leia, so yeah. on and so forth. Although there is an animated short in that where there's, that is the first introduction of Boba Fett in the cartoon, and then I think like I don't know how the story goes, but perhaps George Lucas liked the look of him, so he thought, yeah, I'll have him in mm. in Empire. Um, so when, when when was this shot then after the first movie yeah or? it was like nine, I think it was 1978 or something like that mm-hmm. but it's 
from what I've heard, George Lucas really, really regrets ever, ever allowing that abomination to be filmed. It's it's one of the Star Wars is such a massive phenomenon for like just history in general as mm. as as a, as a as an entity, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. And the Star Wars Christmas special is one of those things that I am so happy exists. <laughs> as well, I tried watching it. I could not watch it all the way through. I think I got. Is it really that bad? It's the bit where um, it was oh, him trying to. What What's the name of it? Is it is his, is Chewie's granddad called Lumpy? There is a Lumpy. I think. I think. It's, it's well, there's yeah. a bit where Chewie's granddad. I think it gets like it basically looks like one of those thing like women put onto like perm the hair, like one of those big things that like a hair you know a salon. Mm-hmm. And I think it's like it's supposed to be like um, a virtual reality sort of headset thing. And you just see him sat in his chair, <laughs> and yeah. he's just there going, and it just, <laughs> it just looks so odd. We need to watch this. It's it's something special. <laughs> it really, it really is. is something it, special. It is. It's. I don't know. What does uh, George Lucas think of it now? Then he hates it. He really does hate it. Even though he filmed it, you watch it. He instantly. didn't. He didn't film it. I think he gave the rights out because it was a TV network. And I don't know if it was HBO or one of these American cable. Ch- I could be wrong. Sorry if there's any Americans watching and they want to. If you want to correct me, then feel free to. Um, I probably probably will. Probably don't even care. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, <laughs> I think that, I think he like sort of licensed out the Star Wars, you know, Star Wars to to this network and then because they wanted to do a holiday special because Star Wars was literally the biggest thing at that point in time mm-hmm. and so we just like yeah okay I don't. Th- I honestly don't think George Lucas had very much involvement with it at all which is surprising because it seems right up his street <laughs> to be fair though at least the prequel trilogy <laughs> are a crap ton better than that yes I need to watch that you do it's, it's awesome I- it's extremely bad <laughs> it's it's awesome because it's bad. I need to watch it, and you need to watch it all the way through. Yeah, we should just sit down and watch it and do a, a discussion afterwards. Yeah, that'd be interesting. That should be our first uh, discussion from from medium. Mm. But if you are interested in what the Star Wars canon is, you've got episode one, two, and three. Then you've got the Clone Wars animated TV series between that all five seasons or six, depending on because I think they did like a season of like lost episodes that weren't aired. Then you've got Star Wars Rebels, which is another animated TV series. Have you ever seen the animated shows? No. no. They're actually quite good. I enjoy I've heard good things. I've heard I enjoy good. them a lot. Um, and then you've got 4, 5, and 6. Mm-hmm. And then every book written after episode 6 is now non-canon. I never considered it to be canon anyway, because in my opinion, unless it specifically came from Lucasfilm, I never considered it to be canon. The stories were fun to read, but I just never, never um, really gave it much attention. Mm. Mainly because a lot of the stories ended up getting stu- like they made Luke like stupidly, stupidly, stupidly powerful. Um, but yeah, and then obviously you've got episode where well, you've got some books now that are going to be set and comic books set between episode six and seven to mm-hmm. sort of bridge that gap. Like there's a book com- that's come out recently called. Um, I forget the name. <laughs> That's not. Yeah. Um, no, Star Wars Aftermath. Right. Um, which is basically the events that happen immediately after the Rebels destroy the second Death Star and the news of the Emperor's death um, starts to spread around. I haven't read the book personally yet, but I want to. I've heard mixed things about it, like it's not really well written, but Star Wars. You know, in the, uh, in the new Star Wars films. Uh huh. Is the uh, Skywalker family like still the heart of the Star Wars, or is it like just completely different? It's hard to say because um, there's two new characters in it, which you've probably seen in the trailers. You've got Finn, <coughs> who's the uh, stormtrooper. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen in the latest teasers holding Luke's blue lightsaber. Um, I don't think so. Um, so so it's, I, not, it's not like Luke has a child who turns out to be evil. Well, this is the thing we don't know um, <laughs> because you've got Finn. His surname's not given, and you've also got a female character called Ray, 
whose surname isn't given either. So either one of those could have some kind of tie to the Skywalker family. Now, I'm inclined to believe that Rey is the daughter of Han and, Le- and Leia. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know how Finn... Because Finn was a First Order Stormtrooper... But then I think like he becomes disillusioned with them and leaves. Isn't um, the stormtrooper African American, or does that not imply? Yeah, that's space? that's Finn. Yeah, but I mean, like he can't be like he can't be like a Skywalker. Why? Well, because like when you have because he's obviously like a like a proper African American guy. And I think, if, I think and, and I think... Luke is a, like a white guy, and if you ha- if you if he had. A child Care- with a careful, careful African American woman. Careful, Rod. They would have like the guy would be mixed race. Yeah, yeah. I see it's what you, I see what so you're saying. What's, yeah. what's the time difference between six and seven? Thirty years. So there's a well, there's not enough of a gap. No. Anyway, that will probably do for a nice bit of Star Wars banter. Yeah. I am actually going to go to the toilet. Okay. Because that <sighs> that cold has gone right through me. You take forever. I do. He spends half that time washing his hands. This is also true.